Before starting to talk about um, the incentives, I wanted to give a quick introduction on Saturn. Um, so Saturn is a project that is being built within Protocol Labs that is aiming to create a content delivery network, or CDN, for Falcon. So they are designing uh, a network that aims to provide fast retrievals of content stored on Falcon, which is something we are thoroughly missing, right? Um, it is decentralized, so this means that anyone can download Saturn code and contribute their resources to, to the network, and by doing that, they will earn some Filecoin. And so I want to stress that this is one of the teams working on this problem, it's definitely not the only one, um, but for um, the context of this talk, I'll focus on, on this project. So in terms of roadmap, I just want to highlight that we hope to launch a first version before a field Lisbon, so end of October. Um, and then after that first launch, uh, we will continue to iterate on it throughout 2022 and beginning of 2023. So it's not, it will be a work in progress. It's not something that we launch and that's the final network and the final design. Okay. Um, so now moving on to the value flow within um, Saturn. So we start with the content publishers. So content publishers are websites and services that wish to deliver content that is stored on Filecoin. So examples could be NFT.storage, Internet Archive, or in the future, Metaverse apps, gaming apps. So any sort of service that is trying to deliver content that could be stored on the Filecoin network. And these services will engage Saturn and buy the service of CDN, okay? So they will pay some Filecoin to Saturn um, to have their content uh, accelerated. On the other hand, we have the end users. So the end users will be regular people coming into these services and using their, their service. Um, so they would engage with Saturn through requests. So they would visit the website, the website would have to load some content and so they would send a request to Saturn and Saturn will give that content back. Um, and they may have some financial relationships with the content publisher so they could have sort of a subscription model or ad revenue or whatever but this is in independent of, of Saturn. Okay, So this is, would be uh, a financial re re relationship that is sort of parallel um, to Saturn. And then finally, we have the node operators. So the node operators are the, the, the people or the computers that are committing resources to Saturn. Um, and so the way it works is every time there's a request to Saturn, um, that uh, request would be routed to the node operators. Node operators would give back that content um, and then receive some file coin in, re in return for um, doing or for fulfilling those requests. And so the, the money flow is sort of moving from the content publishers to the node operators through Saturn, okay? Something I want to highlight here is that nodes are paid based on the logs that they are submitting to Saturn, okay? And the reason for this is that there's no cryptographic proof or efficient proof of retrievals. So it's like you, you cannot prove that you made this retrieval um, without trusting the log you are receiving. And so these guides guided the design of what we call the Saturn Treasury. So it's the, 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 the system that is sort of defining how nodes get paid. Um, and the design includes a log detection system. So because we have to base the rewards on the logs that are being submitted, there's an attack vector here where uh, nodes can game the system and do doctored logs or fake retrievals to try to get more rewards without actually giving out doing like real retrievals to users. And so we have to have this sort of log detection system in place trying to flag these sort of behaviors. Okay. And then we have the reward calculator, which is the module responsible for taking all 
the performance metrics and all the logs and all the flagged entities and then defining how each node will be paid. So they will be defining the payout. And finally, we have the monitoring. So the monitoring here is really important because as I was telling you before, this will be an iterative um, development. So we will launch a first version and then we'll collect data on how the network is being used to improve the whole system. So improve both the log detection and the reward calculator. And so we have this monitoring here to store all the payouts, all the flags and uh, everything so we can improve the system. Okay, so now moving on to the incentives. So when we are designing incentives for any system, a first step is always to align on what behaviors we want to see. So what good looks like, okay? And in this case, we have these two types of behaviors. So we want behaviors we want to see more of, so behaviors we want to incent, and behaviors we want to avoid. On the side of the good behaviors, the first one is a high bandwidth service. So bandwidth is just essentially how much content you are serving in a certain time interval. And so the more bandwidth Saturn has, the more users it can serve and the more content publishers it can serve. And so this is the top behavior we want. We want a really high bandwidth service, okay? But then, this is a CDN, right? So we need fast retrieval. So speed is another um, behavior we want to incent. And finally, reliability. So we don't want nodes going offline out of the blue and users not getting their content. So we want nodes to be reliable. Um, and within these behaviors then comes two questions that we need to answer. So first is, how do we measure performance? So how do we transform these high level behaviors into actual metrics that we can compute? And then how can we use those metrics to redistribute rewards among nodes that are participating? Okay. On the side of the bad behaviors, they essentially uh, are focused on the, the sort of doctored logs and fake retrievals I was telling you earlier. So we want to avoid this sort of behavior of nodes trying to game the system. And questions here are first, how can we detect this? Um, and then once we detect them, what should be the penalties? So we want to apply penalties to not have an incent for nodes to, to do this sort of behavior, okay? So on the log detection module, um, we started, so our design um, choice was to start simple. So we start with the simplest model, just catching the most basic behaviors we expect to see. Um, and then after launch, we'll start collecting data on the actual users and use that data to improve the system. So in terms of the detection methods, we start with heuristics. So heuristics are essentially rules encoding simple behavior. So an example could be we'll flag all nodes that have a bandwidth that is impossibly high. So we, we can find this threshold, right? Like we can think about what would be like the maximum uh, upload speed that uh, uh, a network provider will give you, and so if I'm reporting a bandwidth that goes above this, it's impossible, right? So we, we can flag those types of nodes. And uh, we start, so we start with these heuristics, simple rules, um, and then as we collect more data, we can use more data-driven methods. So we can use anomaly detection, which uh, here is just essentially, essentially, sorry, essentially flagging nodes that are very different from the normal data distribution. So you, you kind of learn what is the normal distribution and what usually nodes do, and you flag anything that is very far, very different from this. So this will be kind of finding anomalies or outliers. But then we can also use machine learning models such as supervised learning, semi-supervised active learning, but again, this would require data. So at the moment, we cannot build these methods, but then as we collect data, we can actually um, try out these and improve the whole system. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, moving on to the rewards. Um, so the, the first question we needed to answer regarding rewards was how to measure performance. So for bandwidth, it's quite straightforward. So we are just using how many bytes are served by a given node in a certain payout window. For speed, we have to use two metrics. So we are using time to first byte and total download time. 
And then for reliability, it's straightforward as well, so we are just using uptime. Now, the second question was, after having these metrics, how do you distribute rewards based on those metrics? And here we are using what we call service scoring functions. So these are essentially functions that map a service metric into a ratio of rewards, okay? And the reason why we are using here ratio of rewards, it's because at each payout window, rewards are bounded. So we have a fixed pool of rewards that will be distributing for that payout window. And so we have to compute what will be the share of rewards of each node that participated in, during that window. And we came up with this sort of general function that is an adjusted um, share of performance. It's adjusted because it has that uh, exponent k that is controlling how much in we incentivize overperformers in relationship with underperformers, okay? So for instance, if we were to use a k equal to one, so a linear function, this will be just a proportional distribution of rewards. Okay, so an example, a node with a ratio of bandwidth of 40% would receive 40% of rewards. So it's linear and proportional, okay? This is option one. Okay, option two is going for an exponent that is higher than one, okay? And this essentially means that overperformers are more incentivized, okay? So an example here with a k equal to two, uh, a node that would be serving 40% of the bandwidth would receive almost 90% of rewards. So you are kind of pushing more over, over, over performers and not as much the underperformers, okay? The third option is to have a K less than one. And so this means that the overperformers are incentivized less and you end up distributing more evenly the rewards. Okay, so an example here will be with a k equal to 0 0.5, so a square root, um, and a node that is committing 60% of the bandwidth and will receive around 15% of rewards, so you are kind of not rewarding as much over performance and you are kind of distributing everything more evenly. And this is a design choice. Okay. okay, now um, moving on to the penalties. So when we were thinking about penalties, we thought about how can we define some theoretical upper, uh, upper bounds and lower bounds. And for that, uh, we used two assumptions. So the first assumption led to a lower bound. And this assumption is essentially saying that the penalty should be large enough so that it is not economically advantageous to cheat, okay? And what does this mean? This means essentially that if a node decides to consistently cheat, on average, on the long run, their reward will be negative, so they'll be losing money, okay? And how do we actually encode this? So we know that the detection system won't be perfect. That's impossible. There's no detection system that will catch everything. And so sometimes it will catch the cheating node and other times it won't. So this concept of sometimes catching a cheating node is called the true positive rate. Or you can think of it as the probability of a cheating node being flagged. Okay? And so we can use that probability and the expected reward in case of the node being flagged versus not being flagged to get that equation there. So we are saying it's like, as we add up every payout time, on average, the, the total reward will be negative. That's the equation you see there. And then, if you solve that equation for P, which is the penalty, um, you get a nice um, lower bound that depends on the average reward before penalties which is that sum of, of the R's over N, and then one over the true positive rate, okay? Now, for the upper bound, the assumption is that penalties should be small enough so it doesn't hurt too much honest notes, okay? And again, what we mean by this, we mean that on the long run, an honest note would receive enough 
rewards um, to not to continue operations and be sustainable. Okay? And once again, the log detection system won't be perfect, so sometimes an honest node will be flagged. It's just the nature of, of the game. Um, and we can encode that on the false positive rate. So this is essentially the probability of an honest node being flagged. And what we are saying here is that the reward after penalties on the long run should be bigger than a certain percentage of the reward before penalties. That's what that tau is doing there, is that ratio of rewards. And if we we'll solve for that, then we have a uh, upper bound that depends again on the average reward before penalties and depends on the tau and the false positive rate of the log detection system. So the nice thing about it is that if you plug in the values for different performances of the log detection system and taus, you get a really tight interval for the penalty parameter. So that this means that there's not a lot of values that actually fit and work. And so we already get a, a pretty good idea of what the penalty should be. Um, but also we get bounds for the performance of the log detection system. So we kind of get, get a goal of what is good enough? Because some values won't lead to intervals that you can, that intersect. So for, for very bad models, there's no penalty that would be high, higher, low enough or big enough, okay? So it already gives us a goal of what the detection system should look like. Okay, for next steps, so before launch, uh, we still want to run a Monte Carlo simulation of the whole treasury economy um, to fine tune the final parameters. And after launch, we want to explore more detection system uh, methodologies as I explained before. So as we collect data, we can explore these things. Um, but there's still a lot of open questions. Um, so one of them is, how to leverage logs from clients and node operators to improve our fraud detection system. Um, so at the moment, we are only collecting logs from the node operators, but as we onboard the content publishers into Saturn, we will be able to start collecting data from their side as well. And these two um, profiles, they are not incentivized to collude because one is paying for the service and the other is being paid. Right? So if you use the logs of these two um, sites and they match, then you're kind of fairly certain that there's no cheating going there. Right? Um, this is one of them. Um, the other is how to open the log detection system. What I mean by this is if you were to show everything, so if you show the rules, the thresholds, the models, everything, is the detection system not obsolete, because if you show everything, usually it's very easy to game, right? But can we design a smarter way of doing this that allows us to show everything and still um, be good enough, okay? Cool, if you want to know more about this, uh, Saturn and Saturn incentives, I left uh, a bunch of, of links here you can check out later. And I'm not sure how we are with time, but if we still have time open for questions, and thank you for your attention. Yeah, I think we have time for a couple questions. If folks have any. Thanks for the talk. Um, you said there's a pretty tight bound between penal, uh, upper and lower bounds. What sort of assumption were you using for like false positive rate? Yeah, so for the, let me see if I can recall. So for the false positive, I think I was looking at around one or two percent, um, because okay. it's like, it's, as I was saying, it's, um, out, we will be kind of moving towards not flagging as much, at least in the beginning. And yeah. then for the true positive rate, it will be around like, 60%, something like that. So you're kind of a bit more loose on the true positive than on the false positive. Okay, awesome. And sorry, just, I may have missed this. What K value did you go with? 
ultimately? So that's one of the parameters that we are still fine-tuning. Okay. So it's, it's, it's really a question of um, how much do you want to incent over performance versus being a bit more equalitarian and having reward distributed more. So it's still something we are fine-tuning. Um, hi, um, it's really cool like uh, how you, there's a tight bound mm -hmm. and I'm wondering like as as the economy grows and will the parameters change over time and will you like find retune it again mm. and if that's the case then you're like it might go obsolete or if like they can game it and things like that, right? Yeah, and yeah sure. So I think in the first stage for sure, I'm, I'm sure like after launch we'll update it a lot, but I think the end goal should be that you have a stable enough detection system that doesn't lead to a lot of changes on the penalty side. Um, but it's true, like the, the performance of the detection system will change um, as time goes on, um, and we'll have to keep balancing that. Um, but yeah, let's hope, like, let's hope that as we start launching and iterating on it, we get to a, a performance that is stable enough for this to work.